Hello everyone, am I audible? Am I audible? So on behalf of Intelitics Institute, I welcome you all, the 10th standard students, for the first paper solving session in physics. Okay, so we are starting up with the first paper solving session in physics. As you all know, you have a 10th standard board exam tomorrow. So according to the latest syllabus of 10th standard physics, here we are solving up the physics MCQs. Hello Dashing Gamers, how are you? How was your paper today? Okay, so we start with question number one. Choose the correct statement with respect to refraction of light through a triangular glass prism. I repeat, choose the correct statement with respect to refraction of light through a triangular glass prism. And the options are A. For a given angle of incidence, a prism with lower refractive index will produce a greater deviation. B. The image of an object viewed through a prism appears to be displaced towards its apex. C. If the angle of incidence is increased, the angle of deviation will increase first and then reach a minimum value. D. A prism will deviate violet light the least and the red light the most. So what should be the correct answer for this? The correct answer for question number one should be B. The image of an object viewed through a prism appears to be displaced towards its apex. Okay. Going to the question number two. The refractive indices of water glycerine, rock salt and diamond are 1.33, 1.47, 1.56 1 and 2.41 respectively. When light travelling in the air is incident at an angle of 30 degrees on the interface separating each of these substances, the angle of refraction will be maximum for dash. A. Water B. Glycerine, C. Rock salt, D. Diamond. And the correct answer for this question is Water. Okay, dashing gamers. Ab sone ja rahe Good. You can join later. No problem at all. So, so, the angle of refraction will be maximum for water. Going ahead with question number three. The sharp image of a vase is formed beyond two f behind the lens. The vase is then moved from the original position and is placed beyond 2F without disturbing the lens. Then the new position of the sharp image formed will be dash. So 
so read the question carefully once again properly so the sharp image of a vase is formed beyond 2f behind the lens the vase is then moved from the original position and is placed beyond 2f without disturbing the lens then the new position of the sharp image formed will be dash and your options are a at 2f2 b at f2 c between f2 and 2f2 d at 2f1 and the correct answer for this question is between f2 and 2f2 so the sharp image of the vase is formed i mean is formed beyond 2f behind the lens the vase is then moved from the original position and is placed beyond 2f without disturbing the lens then the new position of the sharp image formed will be between f2 and 2f2 Question number four. In the diagram shown below, which ray represents the correct path of light while passing through a rectangular glass block? So this is the image. Look at the image properly. You have to answer this question. Which ray represents the correct path of light while passing through a rectangular glass block and your options are a ray a b ray b c ray c d ray d i'm just giving waiting a little longer because there is a lag i understand and i want you all to answer the questions that's the reason i'm slightly going a bit slow please answer me for this question fast so what should be the answer for this question number 4 <laughs> and the correct answer for this question should be B ray B Now coming to the next question number 5 a coin placed at the bottom of a beaker appears to be raised by 4 cm the refractive index of water is 4 by 3 and the steps to find the actual depth of the water x in the beaker are given below choose the correct option to find the actual depth of the water first x plus 4 is equal to 4x by 3 second 4 by 3 is equal to x upon 4 minus x third option is x minus 4 is equal to 3x by 4 fourth 3 by 4 is equal to x upon x minus 4 now give me the answer for this question number 5 a students you are requested to write the question number and then write the option you feel is the correct answer the correct answer for this question is first x plus 4 is equal to 4x by 3 the correct answer is c that is third i'm sorry it is x minus 4 is equal to 3x upon 4 that's going to be the correct answer 
going ahead. Question number 5. The actual depth x of the water in the beaker is dash. A. 12. B. 16. C. 20. D. 80. So what is the actual depth of the water in the beaker? Actual depth x of the water in the beaker is dash. <coughs> And the correct answer for this question is I want you all to answer it's 16. Going ahead, question number 6. The diagram below shows an object of size 7 cm and is placed at a distance of 21 cm from a lens of focal length 14 cm. With respect to this, answer the following questions. So this is what is the diagram. You can have a look at it. The position of the image should be dash A, 8.4 cm in front of the lens. B, 42 centimeters behind the lens. C. 12.4 centimeter in front of the lens. D. 4.2 centimeter behind the lens. So the position of the image should be dash. Give me the answer. Come on. Answer me for question number 6A. And the correct answer is A. That is 8.4 cm in front of the lens. Going again, okay, question number 6B. The nature and size of the image will be dash. A. Real, inverted and diminished. B. Virtual, erect and highly diminished. C. Virtual, erect and magnified. D. Virtual, erect and diminished. So what should be the nature and the size of the image? And the correct answer for this question is D. Virtual, erect and diminished. Going to the next question 6, C. The length of the image with sign convention is dash. A. Plus 2.8 cm. B. 1.8 cm. C. Minus 2.8 cm. D. Plus 28 cm. So, the length of the image with sign convention is dash. And the correct answer for this question is A. Plus 2.8 centimeters. Question number 6 D. If the lens is placed on water instead of air, then choose the correct option. A. The focal length will remain the same. B. The focal length will increase and the power of the lens will decrease. C. The focal length will decrease and the power of the lens will increase. D. The power of the lens will remain the same. And the correct answer for this question will be the focal length will increase and the power of the lens will decrease. So if the lens is placed in water instead of air, 
then the focal length will increase and the power of the lens will decrease. Going ahead to question number 7. Chemical energy to mechanical energy conversion takes place in dash. A. A motor. B. A thermocouple. C. An electric generator. D. A car engine. So chemical energy to mechanical energy conversion takes place in dash. The answer is a car engine. Question number 8. Work done by a waiter against the force of gravity in carrying a tray of ice cream to the table is dash. Here you can see a handsome waiter carrying the tray of ice cream. Unfortunately not to us but to some table. What would be the option here? Let us see. So the work done by a waiter against the force of gravity in carrying the tray of ice cream to the table would be dash. And the options are A. Negative B. Positive C. Zero D. Half MGH What should be the answer for this question? <coughs> the answer to this question is C. Zero. Going ahead to question number nine. If a body capital P of mass 0.2 kilograms and the body Q of mass 10 kilograms both have the same momentum 50 kilograms, then the ratio of their kinetic energy will be dash. A. 1 is to 50. B. 5 is to 1. C. 1 is to 5. D. 50 is to 1. And the answer for this question is D, 50 is to 1. So if a body P of these, then the ratio of their kinetic energy will be 50 is to 1. Question number 10. Which of the following is not an example of dynamic equilibrium? A, a cyclist going straight without tilting along a straight track with a constant speed. B, Children on a seesaw at the balance point. C. Motion of the earth around the sun. D. Raindrop reaching the earth's surface with a constant velocity. And the correct answer for this question is... Children on a seesaw at the balance point is not an example of dynamic equilibrium. Question number 11a. A uniform meter rod of 100 newtons weight carries weights of 40 newtons and 60 newtons suspended from the 20 centimeter and 90 centimeter mark respectively as shown in the diagram below. Which one of the following diagrams shows the correct position of the knife edge to balance the meter scale? And this is what is the diagram first, second, third, fourth. So which one of the following diagrams shows the correct position of the knife edge to balance the meter scale? So, give me the answer for this question number 11a.
the correct answer for this question will be come on what should be the answer i've given you a b c d options answer for this question is d now coming to question number 11b the knife edge in part a will be at mark dash on the meter scale x is equal to 36 b x is equal to 44 c x is equal to 56 d 50 x is equal to 50 and the correct answer for this question is the knife edge in the part a will be at mark x is equal to 56 on the meter scale question number 12 a car weighing 10 grams and traveling at 30 meters per second stops at a distance of 50 meters decelerating uniform work done by the brakes is dash a 49 into 10 joules b 45 into 10 joules c 49 into 10 joules d 45 into 10 joules i think the options are same a b c d options they look to be same they have been written twice so the answer here is 45 into 10 joules Question number twelve B. The force exerted by the brake is dash a nine eighty newtons, b ninety eight into one hundred and four newtons. Nine. I suppose it should be ten raised to four newtons. Nine into ten raised to six newtons, and nine thousand newtons. The force exerted by the brake. and the correct answer for this question is 9000 newtons question number 12c a skier a mass of 60 kg stands at p at the top at a distance 75 meters from the ground he moves from p to q and takes off his jump at q with negligible friction take g is equal to 10 meter seconds and your options are for c the picture and the options are okay the question is the change in the gravitational potential energy of the skier between p and q is dash a 36 into 10 raised to 3 joules b 9 into 10 raised to 3 joules c 45 into 10 raised to 3 joules d 42 into 10 raised to 3 joules and the correct answer for this question is a 36 into 10 raised to 3 joules a question number 12d if 75% of the energy in part c becomes kinetic energy at q the speed at which the skier arrives at q is dash a 24 meters per second b 30 meters per second c 22 meters per second d 34 meters per second
The correct answer is 30 meters per second. Question number 13. Which of the following statements are correct with respect to the mechanical advantage of a pulley? First, MA increases with greater weight of the moving parts of the machine. Second, in a single fixed pulley, the weight of the pulley itself does not affect its MA. Third, MA is always greater than the velocity ratio of a machine. Fourth, MA for an ideal single movable pulley is 2. And your options are A, 1 and 3. Second, I mean B, 2 and 4. C, 1 and 4. D, 1 and 2. And the correct answer is second and four. So in a single fixed pulley, the weight of the pulley itself does not affect its M. M A. I hope you know what is M A. And the fourth one is M A for an ideal single movable pulley is two. For all the students, I hope you recollect this. See such type of questions which are slightly tricky may be asked. So please remember MA is nothing but mechanical advantage for all the students who really do not remember it. Question number 14. In the pulley system shown in the diagram below, if an effort of 500 newtons is required to lift a load of 750 newtons, then the efficiency of the machine is dash. And here this is what is the pulley system shown in the diagram. And your options are A, 66.66%, B, 75%, C, 15%, D, 13.33%. So what should be the answer for this? The correct answer for this question should be any guesses? As Kyaoge Arushi Shah, Smart Girl, Sharon, Sub Soge, the dashing game was to Bolki Gay, the Sone Jara. Come on, come on, answer. I'm waiting. So the correct answer for this question is B, that is 75%. Question number 15A. Sorry, question number 50. A fixed pulley is driven by a load of 100 kg falling through 8 meters in 4 seconds and the efficiency of the machine is 0.75. Take G is equal to 9.8 meters square meters per second. Then the input power of the machine is dash. A. 1690 watts. B. 1960 watts. C. 1740 watts. D. 1470 watts. And the correct answer for this question is 1960 watts. Question number 16, identify the incorrect statement 
with respect to the conditions required for the equilibrium of a body. A. The net torque acting on the body must be zero about any point. B. The resultant of all the forces acting on the body must be zero. C. The resultant of the moment of all the forces acting on the body about the point of rotation should be zero. D. The sum of the anticlockwise moments about the axis of rotation must be equal to the sum of the clockwise moments. And the correct answer for this question is the net torque acting on the body must be zero about any point is the incorrect statement with respect to the conditions required for the equilibrium of the body. Question number 17. The displacement time graph of a wave traveling in a string is given below. The wave velocity is 220 meter per second. So this is what is the time graph of the wave traveling in the string and the options are, okay, the first question is, the frequency of the wave is dash. A, 1.25 hertz. B, 5 hertz. C, 2.5 hertz. D, 0.1 hertz. Correct answer for this question would be C, 2.5 hertz. Coming to the next question, 17b, the wavelength of the wave in part A is dash. A, 176 hertz. B, 2200 hertz. C, 44 hertz. D, 88 hertz. So, what is the wavelength of the wave in the part A? And the correct answer for this question is 88 hertz. The question number 17C. Sam driving a lorry approaches a wall with a uniform velocity of 20 meter per second. He sounds the horn and hears the echo after 4 seconds. If the velocity of the sound in the air is 330 meter per second, select the correct step from the given options to calculate the distance between the wall and the point where the horn is sounded. And your options are first 330 is equal to 2D minus 80 by 4. Second, 330 is 2D plus 80 upon 4. Third, 330 is 2D upon 4. Fourth, 330 is 80 plus D upon 4. And the correct answer for this question will be A. First, that is 330 is equal to 2D minus 80 upon 4. Question number 17D. The distance D between the wall and the point where the horn of the lorry is sound is dash. A. 1240 meters. B. 1280 meters. C. 700 meters. D. 660 meters. So the distance D between the wall and the point where the horn of the lorry is sounded is 700 meters. Going to the next assertion, the boy will hear the echo distinctly if the wall is at a distance greater than 17 meters. So this is question 18a, you have to, I mean this is assertion and reasoning type of question. The reason given is if the reflector is at a distance greater than 17 meters, the reflected sound will reach the person at least 0.1 second before the original sound is heard. And your options are, okay, well, A, both the statements 1 and 2 are true and the statement 
2 is the correct explanation of the statement 1. B. Both the statements 1 and 2 are true and the statement 2 is not the correct explanation of the statement 1. C. Statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. D. Both the statements are true. So what should be the answer to this question number 18A? The correct answer is C. Statement 1 is true and statement 2 is false. Question number 18B. Sound waves are dash. A. Electromagnetic waves. B. Mechanical waves. C. Transverse waves. D. Radio waves. So sound waves are dash. So the sound waves are mechanical waves. Question number 19. 1 joule is equal to dash kwh. A. 3.6 into 10 raised to 6. B. 0.278 into 10 raised to minus 6. C. 3.6 into 10 raised to minus 6. D. 36 into 10 raised to minus 5. And the correct answer for this question is B. So 1 joule is equal to 0.278 into 10 raised to minus 6 kWh. Question number 20. Which of the following statement about electromagnetic radiation is correct? A. Ultraviolet radiations are usually not scattered by dust particles in the atmosphere. B. A thermopile can be used to detect the heat radiations when gamma radiations fall on it. C. Infrared radiations are scattered less because of their long wavelength. D. X-rays are produced by electronic devices such as crystal oscillators. And the correct answer for this question is C. So, infrared radiations are scattered less because of their long wavelength. Question number 21a. A bowling ball of mass m is allowed to fall freely under gravity from point P, which is at a height of a plus b meters from the ground as shown in the picture. So, this is what is the picture. So, the kinetic energy of the ball at point Q is dash a mgh b mg into brackets b plus a c half mg into brackets a plus b d half mgh and the correct answer so this question should be A, MGH. So the kinetic energy of the ball at the point Q is MGH. Question number 21B. The total mechanical energy of the ball at position C, that is ground, is dash A, MG into brackets A plus B, B, 0, C, MG A, D, MG B. So, what is the total mechanical energy of the ball at position C? And the correct answer for this question is A. Mg into brackets A plus B is the total mechanical energy of the ball at the position C. 
Now, a ball tied to a string is being whirled in a circular path. Select two correct options based on the picture given. A. The ball moves with a non-uniform speed under the influence of centrifugal force. B. The centripetal force acting on the ball is directed inwards towards the center and is tangential to the direction of velocity at that instant. C. Both centripetal and centrifugal forces acting on the ball are real. D. The centrifugal force is not a force of reaction of the centripetal force as action and reaction do not act on the same body. And the correct answer for this question would be D. The centrifugal force is not a force of reaction of the centripetal force as action and reaction do not act on the same body. Now coming to the next. Question number 23A. The diagram shows the yellow light incident on a right angled prism. The critical angle of glass air interface for yellow light is 45 degrees. So the angle of incidence of the yellow light at surface PQ is dash A 119 degrees B 71 degrees C 90 degrees D 19 degrees The correct answer for this question is so question number 23b. If the yellow light incident on the prism is replaced with red light at the same angle of incidence, which one of the following statement will be true? A. The angle of refraction at the surface PQ will be 90 degrees. B. The red light will be refracted at the surface PR and emerge out of the prism. C. Total internal reflection will take place at the surface PR. D. Red light will be refracted along the surface PR of the prism. And the correct answer for this question is B. So if the yellow light incident on the prism is replaced with red light at the same angle of incidence, then the red light will be refracted at surface PR and emerges out of the prism. Question number 23C. What will be the change in the critical angle for the red light compared to the yellow light? A. There will not be no chance in the critical angle. B. The critical angle of red light will be less than that of the yellow light. C. The critical angle of red light will be greater than that of the yellow light. <coughs> D. Information is insufficient to arrive at a conclusion. And the correct answer for this question will be C. So, the critical angle of the red light will be greater than that of the yellow light. Question number 23D. A total reflecting right-angled isosceles prism can be used to deviate a ray of light through dash. A. 30 degrees. B. 60 degrees. C. 75 degrees. D. 90 degrees. <coughs> so, 
the answer for this question will be 90 degrees. So the total reflecting right angle isosceles prism can be used to deviate a ray of light through 90 degrees. <coughs> so friends, we have solved the first paper on physics, 10th standard ICSC. Please hang on with our channel. If you are new to the channel, kindly subscribe to our channel and hit the like button as well as hit the bell icon so that you will get to know about the new upcoming videos that we shall be uploading for physics. We will be doing many more live streams. Okay, so please hook on to this channel, spread a word about this to your friends and let's study together and shine together. Thank you so much. We'll catch up with you soon.